Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're so excited. We are here to talk about the premiere of All Creatures Great and Small, season four. Uh, and uh, we it's so funny because I've actually seen now this episode. I've seen it three times, which is wild. <laughs> I love it so much. I love the show so much. I, I feel like it still hasn't quite caught on here in the in the States. And I'm just trying to do my little part to tell everybody I know about just great and small and uh so excited to talk about this premiere and i feel good at grace wagner and michelle's here hey everyone how's it going yeah it's good i'm just so excited to to get yeah. back to all creatures and people were probably like why did you see it three times well the first time i saw it i watched it just after it aired in the uk uh, with my VPN, uh, so watched it yay. together pretty much. <laughs> yeah, we watched it at the same time. It was really fun, and, <laughs> and then I saw it at uh, PBS Utah. They had an event uh, where I got to see it on the big screen, so that was really fun. And it was it was very funny because I I there were probably maybe three or four other people that were under the age of sixty five at this screen. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that probably is not only maybe the the, the core fan group of All Creatures Great and Small, but but also probably the people who are patrons of PBS Utah. <laughs> it's probably the Venn diagram. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, so, but it was super super fun. People were missing out. <clears throat> and, I don't think uh, I've ever seen an episode of television in the cinema before. Yeah, I haven't often. I'm trying to think of what else um i have seen uh on the big screen uh i i don't know i can't really i know that they air like the um doctor who christmas special and you know some other stuff like that uh yeah. but uh but yeah i haven't i haven't seen many many uh, uh yeah i uh, think they did the i think it was one it was either sort of the the house of dragons or the lord of the rings tv show i think they aired like oh, the yeah. pilot episodes in the cinema mm-hmm. um but yeah, nothing near me. Other, I definitely would have yeah. um, loved to have seen them. I know that's the whole. T- when I was there, I was like, "Oh man, I wish Michelle was here." <laughs> <laughs> it was so-, so fun. Yeah, it was really fun. And uh, and then I of course then I watched it again to take notes and get ready, you know, for the podcast. So that's why I've seen it three times. <laughs> and the big, I guess news uh this season was that of course that tristan was going to be gone Mm -hmm. and uh, you know that's a it's a it's a bummer but they did write it into the the plot Mm -hmm. well this was no um uh down abbey situation (laughs) still put scarred for life from down abbey (laughs) (laughs) whenever it's around christmas i think it, it reached like the the 10th anniversary of, of that because we got that episode on Christmas Day that was like oh my gosh what a horrible in TV Christmas like present. yeah and I, I was working on Boxing Day and I was so depressed I was like <laughs> this is awful I was so angry um yeah but yeah I think you have to give props where props are due like this is a really well written way of doing it yeah it makes sense um and I think every all the big changes um mm-hmm. with Tristan with Helen I think they're really authentic to the time. Yes. Um, and I think the show is just very um careful with the way that it deals with these big issues yeah. because they are like polarizing things. You know, a fan favorite, you know, leaving. You know, like these plot lines that they tend to be tropes that I'm not the biggest fan of, but I feel like this show does them really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is. It's so well written. I don't think we give enough credit to the writers that. <laughs> do such an incredible job with these characters and and you, know, you just think about how so many other shows have just completely botched the the leaving of a character i mean when calls the art like absolutely horrible and uh, and and that this is and you can't imagine you can imagine a space where he comes back for an episode here an episode there and uh, you know that would be fun, but it also makes sense given the time period, and uh, and 
I mean, I will never understand when calls the heart, when you literally have a world war that you could have just sent them off to, Mm -hmm. you don't have to show the war. Yeah. That's it. He's gone. I mean, that's all you have to do (laughs) instead of the Mountie on a, on a horse coming in. I mean, it was just, it was terrible, but, uh, but this uh, was handled very well. And uh, we do miss, we do miss Tristan yeah uh, a lot uh but uh but yeah they did the best they could with the situation yeah, yeah and i think they handle it well see in future episodes like they, they don't go about trying to replace them because mm-hmm. i feel like that personality and that energy just yeah, is very yeah. unique to that actor yeah um and i don't think it's something that they could replace right um so they don't try to which i think yeah. is the only way to do it yeah well, this is a premiere is called Broodiness, and it's 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 Easter, nineteen forty, and with Tristan away, Skeldale House is busier than ever. Everyone looks to the future, and James tries to save a dog from its owner. So, overall, what do you think of this premiere? Yeah, I was so excited just for it to be, be back. Um, mm-hmm. I've rewatched it the other night just to sort of um, refresh because I think when a show like this is gone for such a long time, you're just sort of excited to to see it yeah. back and you're not really paying attention to the, all right. the little sort of character moments but yeah i thought this was was such a i was nervous as well obviously with tristan being gone like what that was mm-hmm. going to be like um you know we've seen siegfried sort of react to things in not the best <laughs> the most emotionally mature way so i was sort of dreading what he was going to be like what has what tristan's absence how that had affected him and mm-hmm. if that was going to be like a heaven, well, obviously it was going to be a heaviness, but if it was going to be like a thing where he was, you know, angry, aggressive, not not good to work with sort of yeah. energy that he was going to bring. But I think they handled it really well. Um, and I love James's plot line in this, in this episode. I thought it was really fun and really moving. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was one. There were a few little, little gripes. I guess I had with the episode, but for the most part, I yeah, really enjoyed it. Uh, especially the dynamic between Helen and Siegfried, I thought was really good. In yeah, this I think yeah, I think funny. moving Helen into the house has been really fun because mm-hmm. it is a very crowded house. <laughs> yeah, it really but in, yeah, it's like adding another person and another person this season. It's it's going to be tough. But mm-hmm. I think her dynamic. And also, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I was a little nervous about the sort of chemistry between, or the sort of characters clashing of Helen and, and Mrs. Hall. I never, I didn't want to see that because oh, yeah. I feel like that would really go against who they are as characters. So I'm glad that that's not the, the case. <laughs> yeah, it was really smart to have them kind of team up on these bandages thing and to <laughs> hiding them from Siegfried. That was really funny. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Yeah, instead of being at odds with each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. So it was like Miss Hale, it, it must all sort of run in the house and whereas... Helen, her involvement is really just James in the vet veterinary practice. It's not mm-hmm. anything to do with the running of the house. Um, yeah. So I like the way they've done that. Yeah. 
So it starts out, he, he we, we, it's Easter, there's kids all around uh, hunting for eggs and stuff. And he almost hits this dog with, James almost hits this dog with his car. And he's sort of shocked and, and upset about that. And uh, and then so we get to see this boy. Uh, he's, man, I, he was extremely violent. And he's throwing rocks at James. And that's where I thought was maybe a little over the top when I was, I literally, when, he, when, when Wesley, when he punches James in the face, I was like, <laughs> so shocked by that. I mean, that seemed uh, maybe it was like a, a jump scare. Bit. It was like, it really was. I was like, uh, that I I was just shocked that it seemed almost a little too far. That I mean that, that this, in order to redeem the character within one episode, I felt like maybe they should have just had him be kind of grumpy and not literally violent, like punching an adult in the face. Like that just seemed a little over the top to me. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I, I think they do try to sort of explain it away in when the show has background and, and the way that he's living um, and why, you know, his sort of... And I, I like when they, they have these shows that are set in these sort of idyllic sort of places. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you have a little bit of that on sort of like When Calls the Heart, you see... Not When Calls the Heart, um, Called the Midwife, where oh. basically the majority of what you see is in the Nanotta's house with the nuns and then when you venture out into the community and you see the way that people are living and the struggles that they have and just like the the res- resources that they don't have access to um, you know James and Helen they all live a very sort of, I wouldn't say a privileged life but they live a very sort of idyllic sort of life from a viewer yeah. perspective and so I like it when they sort of go, that's not all um mm this town this town has you know people up and down the sort of spectrum of you know that aren't working in farms that are really struggling that are really you know so i I do like that they sort of opened up the town a little bit more that it's not just these farms and these sort of you know the the mrs pomfrey's of the of the sort of community that they, they actually did open it up a little bit more but I do agree that was very unsettling because it's just not something that we're used to seeing on this show. It was like a jump scare of like, oh my God. Like, it's like a horror movie. I mean, I would be concerned that if, that, I mean, that you should be in jail like for assault, <laughs> for punching somebody in the face. I would be concerned of other violent behavior. To me, that's like emblematic of other very concerning behavior like does he punch other people in his family does he punch his mom you know like his grandma i think it was he's living with like i don't know if you're willing to to punch in the face a complete stranger that is very concerning to me and i also don't think i think the thing that they did sort of miss the mark in this episode is tone I feel like the tone of that moment versus the tone of the next scene where Helen's laughing at the the fact that he got punched in the face by a kid like it doesn't match up yeah Um, yeah because it wasn't like say if he had if maybe if he tripped him or something like that maybe you know something like that prank on him or yeah 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 like something like that I could see being a little bit like oh he kind of got you but not being punched in the face like that. Was, that was uh, sort of like this, the way that it was filmed, it sort of was like he broke his nose. <laughs> it's that like yeah. um, aggressive. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I do feel like the tone of those two moments of like the actual moment and the reaction to it just didn't match. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe they yeah. should have had him sort of play a prank on him and James sort yeah. of part in the, prog- in the process. Um, or versus... even just like if you just sort of pushed him hard or something like that as uh, opposed to like that feels so like violent to me punching someone in the face mm-hmm. yeah very 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 uh so yeah that was uh, shocking even in the in the in the theater screening i was like <laughs> <he> punched <laughs> him in the face 
Um, and we have such good acting from Samuel West in this episode. He has got these letters from, from Tristan and he's really struggling to write back. Yeah. It's like, what do you say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's, he is trying to be encouraging, but also it brings up a lot of PTSD from his service and yeah. uh, it's just it's it's really hard for him mm-hmm. and yeah and i like that they showed yeah i like that they showed a little bit of tristan's personality and that they had like his letters have drawings and things like mm-hmm. that um it's very sort of tristan yeah um so yeah i like that even though he's gone he was still <laughs> he was still there in spirit yeah yeah and they get his picture out which is cute mm-hmm and and so then we have this whole plot of Mrs. Hall going to uh, the uh, county records or county hall, whatever, um, to sh- she thinks she's just going to be able to like fill out a form and get divorced. Mm-hmm. She thinks it's going to be really easy. Um, but it turns out it's not. They need she needs to provide details of the marriage, fill out all these things. And, and so, uh, yeah, that's that's tough. Yeah, um, I think at that time, you know, a divorce is something that you know is not really a thing. Um, it's not really something that mm-hmm. you know women do. But I think Mrs. Hall's situation is very. I don't think she's had any contact with her husband for years at this point. Yeah. So I think. Well- and it's still not easy to get a divorce. I mean, you still have to have an attorney and you still have to, I mean, even in the easiest of divorces where there's no contention of children or assets, you know, it's, it's very clean. It's still, mm-hmm. at least here in, in America, like you have to go before the court and you have to like it. It's, I mean, I got, I, it makes sense. Like, y- you it's a a legal binding contract uh, that you make when you get married and uh, so it makes sense that it won't be like super easy to break a legal binding contract Mm -hmm. yeah i think there's just so much shame attached to it back then um Mm -hmm. yeah and even just having to say those words are so difficult for her Mm-hmm. um but well, I do like it, especially because we have a religious aspect going on uh where it was considered mm-hmm. uh, and i mean still technically is in the catholic church as far as i understand you're still not supposed to get divorced in the catholic church and and so when there's that aspect as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know so that she feels like she's breaking a vow that she, you know she made yeah, uh, she's really struggling covenant. with the idea of going to church um mm-hmm. with all this going on so yeah it's feels judged feels judged and yeah it's just i do like this storyline for mrs hall because i yeah. do think um i do think this is a good road ahead for her yeah i mean feels judged and probably was judged would be judged i mean that's the sad part about you know yeah. about unfortunately sometimes uh people of in any kind of group environment, there's going to be a certain amount of that amount of judge judgment. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, unfortunately sometimes uh, the um, uh, pious can be the most, the harshest mm-hmm. as well, which, is, which is ridiculous. I mean, when you look at the example of Jesus, he was nothing but non-judgmental, you know, he's, he was the one who said he without sin let them cast the first stone he mm-hmm. was the one who uh ate with the publicans and sinners and the, <laughs> the people that the the pharisees the sadducees and the pharisees would have nothing to do with and so you know if we're if we're looking at at the bible for our example then we should you know be kind and empathetic try to see where other people are coming from and uh, and you know the 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 church for perfect people is is a very empty church <laughs> so uh that, but and 
it, it definitely can happen. That's for sure. We've all felt it who are, you know, regular churchgoers. That's, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I think it is a good plot line and it, and it, and it provides a vulnerability to Mrs. Hall. It adds nuance to her character and it, it's something that she can bond in a way with, with Siegfried because it's not that he had a failed marriage, but he, uh, he has, in a way lost a partner and mm-hmm. I don't know, it just feel like it, it, it adds to their bond because he's not judgmental of her. Yeah. And I also feel like it's the only way that they can move forward with the idea of Mrs. Hall and Sigrid. Um, yeah. If she has divorced and, and removed herself from that relationship. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they actually go there this season. <laughs> yeah, I know. Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by W Rated, the podcast where we willingly watch the world's worst rated movies. Join me, Daisy. And me, Claire, as we break down the IMDb Bottom 100, choosing a different film from the list every episode. We take a deep dive into the plot, production, release and reviews, usually with a special guest to uncover if these films are truly as bad as everyone says they are. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods and anywhere else you find your podcasts. A difficult lambing going on at the Slavin's house. And this was a pretty good arc, little arc for Siegfried, because he he just kind of assumes that this Slavin's guy that he has all the support. Yeah, he puts his, his foot daughter like and wife. Here. Yeah, and he's like, Oh, I'm sure Mrs. Slavin's can help you with the lambs because the 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 lamb isn't the you isn't taking to the the lamb yeah, so it rejects it yeah and uh, and then he finds out later that mrs uh, mrs slavens died last month and, yeah. uh, and so then he feels really bad yeah really and bad. his kids have sort of flooded the nest as well so he's all on his mm-hmm. own mm-hmm. yeah yeah so that that was a pretty good little arc and uh, and then uh we have let's see here so yeah james is worried that the dog has just dis- what's called distemper mm-hmm. um which if untreated could he, the dog could die yeah. and and that's what he's worried about it's a virus and it can infect dogs raccoons skunks foxes large cats such as lions and tigers it infects the lungs airways nose and eyes it also can infect the brain and suppress the immune system. D- distemper can cause serious illness and death in these animals. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's very serious. One in two dogs will die from their infection. So, yeah. It's, it's I think that's, that's one of the sort of vaccines that a lot of animals will get when they're, you know, young. Um, to avoid these sort of things, but I don't know, don't know when that happens. So I don't know if the vaccine is readily available to them at this point. But yeah, mm. seeing if it says anything. It's hard when it's a virus. Those are always the the worst, the hardest to treat. Let's see on the Wikipedia. Does not an affect humans, just animals. Yeah. you're right there's vaccine despite extensive vaccination in many regions it remains a major diagnosis in dogs and was the leading cause of infectious disease death in dogs prior prior to the vaccine being available so 1923 to 1924 was when it was first developed mm. Uh. says no specific treatment for cdv is known as with measles the treatment is symptomatic and supportive cares geared towards fluid electrolytes imbalances neurological symptoms and preventing any secondary bacterial infections examples include administering fluids electrolyte solutions 
broad spectrum antibiotics. Yeah. So, yeah. So it sounds like what James was saying was true. He says that the mortality rate of CDV largely depends on the immune status of the infected dogs. Mm -hmm. Puppies experience the highest mortality rate where complications such as pneumonia and uh, are more common. So, so yeah, that's why it was so important that uh, you make sure that he's getting the, the care that he needs because it wasn't as much the distemper, I guess, that would kill the dog, but that if the dog had then gotten pneumonia or some other kind of infection in this state. Having to fight state, multiple things. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, he was really worried and Wesley would not listen to him. Mm -hmm. and so yeah he ends up calling the rspca and having him come and he's gonna take away the dog but helen tries to you know convince him otherwise but i i can understand where especially if it got him punched in the face like i can understand where he was coming from with this yeah yeah i think <laughs> yeah it's, it's sort of a you know difficult situation um they, yeah. they, you know, it's their job to remove the animal from a situation, especially if help is being provided and they're refusing it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. But then, so he's he, so the lady comes out, and uh, they're in in there for the inspection, and he sees that the that the I forget what the dog's name was, Duke, Duke. That the the sleeping areas for Duke was uh, clean, and he'd given him the food that mm -hmm. he had given to Wesley, mm -hmm. so he could tell he was feeding him, and uh, and so he decides, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have you take the dog away, mm -hmm. and he'll, and and so that was, I mean, you just know that like they do such a good job in the show of making James the best person without making him cloying unbearable or yeah. <laughs> unbearable. Yeah. They he's, he is such a good man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so rare on television it's as well. It's so rare. Yeah, it really is. But one of the, the reasons why Superman is my favorite superhero and yet the rest of sort of, I think since the sort of superhero sort of boom, it's sort of, slowed down a little bit now but and sort of the height of it like he was seen as the boring one right and like he's not boring <laughs> he's not no. boring because he's a good man he's you know has morals yeah. and lives by them and you know that's not yeah. boring that can be you know written really well yeah. um so yeah yeah i have a whole article about a guy called how to save superman i wrote it in 2016 and uh, I talk about that, about how using his moral clarity as a point of conflict, because he can't save everyone. So yeah. how does he decide who to save? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there's lots of interesting things you can do with a moral character. It doesn't have to necessarily be very bland. It's just the writing has not been this current, uh, well, now finished uh, iteration of the character. The writing was weak. Yeah, it was weak. Um, so yeah, I agree. And he, he just makes him so easy to root for because he is such a kind man and good person. And, and, he, and I agree with you that you don't see that that much in media these days. Like everybody has to be kind of a fallen hero and everybody has to be kind of bitter, you know, and cynical. And uh, I, I was just talking about that the other day that like, why does every single hero and, it have to turn into logan like <laughs> it's like do we have any other ideas like come on it's so so annoying it's, you know <laughs> people turn to books you know it's like those type of men or you know women as well sort of exist in books because it's yeah. it has that thing of like you can't just have a like you say a moral, a moral character anymore it has to be it has to be something else Mm -hmm. Um, where it's a man or a woman, it has to be. They have to have something, some mm -hmm. kind of trauma, some kind of, <laughs> some kind of something. Yeah. Um, you know, to make it interesting, because yeah, which makes People it not to... interesting. Because again, like I was like, 
like I was saying about the Logan example, it's like if every single character is this embittered old man character, then they're not interesting anymore. Like Logan was interesting because it was one of the first to kind of try that. And with our, with our heroes, you know, now it's just like, Oh my gosh. So it, it, it's it, in a weird way, like having such a moral good man, good character in James is so refreshing. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why I love Diana and the, the Wonder Woman film and why I liked, you know, yes. Captain America and the, and the first Avenger, like, yeah. and then they lose it in the second. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. they can't yeah. sustain it. <laughs> well, as this show has done it for four years now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I mean, he stays, he stays pretty, pretty true. It's everything around him Staying that around becomes him. kind yeah. of cynical. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they do a good job, I think, in that end game saga of, mm-hmm. of, with, because he is, there's always the contrast to Tony, mm-hmm. who has a different philosophy and seeing the two of those evolve. I think that really worked. But yeah, you're, you're. It's true that uh, that they could only keep the the kind of the Boy Scouts uh, so long. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that T-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. He tells Wesley uh, that I will help you and take care of Duke. And he's just so patient, so kind. And that finally, even Wesley can't, can't re- resist uh, anymore. Because <laughs> he does love his dog and he wants his dog to be, uh, to be well. And when he comes back and he says, can you help my dog? And, and that was very, it was very sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, he, he says, I don't take charity. Uh, and so he wants to work in mm-hmm. order to pay for the, the care for the dog. Yeah. I think that does a little bit in redeeming the character and that he's not mm-hmm. gonna, you know, accept, you know, help for nothing that he's, he's willing to, Mm-hmm. you know muck out the muck out the stables or yeah you know the place that they keep the, the animals cages, so, yeah. yeah yeah and then uh Siegfried is like oh, I have an idea and I thought that we would be maybe even seeing more of Wesley mm-hmm. I thought was he going to be like the replacement for Tristan but that doesn't really happen no no. There is, a, you know, as a frustrating thing with this show as well as we get introduced to so many people, and it, there, there is people that you're like, oh, I wish they would come back for like another episode, or yeah, it yeah. is very procedural in that sense of like it's a one and done sort of like true character. Mm-hmm. That's true, and and so they Sigfrid gets the idea and takes Wesley up to Mister Slavens and says, "I got just the helper for you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the way it's shot that it's all snowy up there and you know it's you know Easter so it's still a you know, a bit of winter in the in the hills and it's just such a yeah. contrast between up in the hills, up in the farms, up in the dales to <laughs> down in the village. hmm hmm Yeah. It was it was very it was very sweet. Uh so we also have this whole plot of Helen uh, is kind of driving Siegfried crazy <laughs> and uh, she orders too many, uh, too many bandages, like boxes and boxes and boxes. And he is trying to give up uh, smoking his pipe for Lent mm-hmm. and because it's right, it's right around Easter time. And, uh, and so uh, he's looking and looking and looking for in his, uh, his tobacco and he keeps finding all these bandages 
with their hiding. It was really funny. It was really funny, and let's see, their chemistry was so good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was a little bit worried what they were going to do with Helen, but yeah, I like yeah. the, the way they've sort of put her into the house. I do too. I do too. Uh, if you were going to give up something for Lent, like, yeah, what would what would you? What do you think? What would you give up? Like, I don't think I could do or... it. Yeah, I don't think I could do it, but probably coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like. I can't function without a coffee in the morning. Um, it's really <laughs> bad. It's really bad. Um, so yeah, I would probably try to give up caffeine. Um, mm. and that so includes, just have like, decaf. I could probably just have a really like decaf, but um, I'd probably <laughs> yeah. I think caffeine would be the big one. Um, mm. because especially <clears throat> especially work lately, like everybody walks around with energy drinks, and it's like. It's so tempting as well yeah. to just like have one of those, and yeah. So I would just say caffeine across the board. Like, I feel like that would be so difficult, though. Yeah, I I, I get on spurts where I do drink a lot of caffeine, especially this last uh, like the last couple of months, mm-hmm. where I uh, where I was just watching so many movies, so I like needed to stay awake. <laughs> And then you get in the habit and then you <clears throat> got to have it. I remember when I, when I was in my job that I absolutely hated and was miserable, I would start, I started where I would get a, like a big soda uh, mm-hmm. every morning uh, at the um, convenience store right by m- where my work. And it would help me kind of get through the day because I was just not happy. And then I started to notice that on Saturdays and Sundays, I would have a headache I was like, why do I have a headache? And <laughs> I realized that it was because I wasn't getting my, my soda every morning like I was. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the thing that I would be concerned about as well. Like, I'd like to give it a go and try and give it up, but it would be, I would not look forward to the headaches. <laughs> it would yeah. be so bad. Yeah. Um, I What would I give up? Um... Maybe chocolate. I mean, I don't like always have chocolate every day, but I would miss it if I couldn't have chocolate anymore. <laughs> my my mom's doing this like cleanse thing where she's trying to like figure out her biome and what makes her sick because she has irritable bowel. And you know, she had to give up chocolate. And I was like, oh, that would suck. <laughs> like like savory person. So like, yeah. <laughs> things like that you, that would be so difficult for me to give up mm-hmm. um so yeah things like that but yeah i think caffeine would definitely be the yeah. the most difficult <laughs> what do you have on your coffee how do you take your coffee um shot of espresso um oh so you like strong yeah I like strong coffee but i think during covid i got really into trying all different coffees um so i literally have like an espresso i'll have like all these different you know things downstairs of <laughs> in my little kitchen corner of just like uh-huh. little mini bistro um i've not like been confident enough to get my like a full like coffee machine uh-huh. um where i grind my own beans and i'd love to do that but i just don't have the space uh-huh. um sort of a blessing that i don't have the space because i feel like <laughs> i would go really over the top with it um but yeah i just yeah i'm not i'm not I used to get sort of, let's say, during COVID, get really fancy and try all these different things and flavorings and uh-huh. try and sort of replicate all of the Starbucks ones because they had all of the recipes online. Um, but now I'm just like, I don't have time. I'm just like, that espresso. Yeah. <laughs> and go. <laughs> espresso and go. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, so it, it was a it was a fun little, uh, it was a fun little comic relief, especially when you're having you know characters getting punched in the face like you needed you needed this to kind of lighten things up yeah for sure yeah and uh and so i liked the moments between siegfried and mrs hall mm-hmm. uh, when he says you know, that who cares what they think and you should still go to church if you want to go to church mm-hmm. and uh and then gerald picks her up and siegfried sees it and he you can like they were definitely i mean because when it first started i was like are they 
really going there? Cause, cause she's so like, she plays such a maternal role mm-hmm. that at first I was kind of like, he just sees her as the mother. Or he doesn't see as a love in, you know, potential love interest. Brought her older than what she was as well. I feel like in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but, but I mean, now they're really leaning into that. I mean, it's obvious. Yeah. That, yeah, he's interested. Quite where he is. Um, and he's not really that far along either. He, I don't think he's self realized it yet. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, I definitely yeah. think he's going to get their way before she does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's feeling the jealousy for yeah. Ger- or Gerald a lot. Yeah, a lot for sure. And <laughs> so she goes to church, and it was very sweet. And he says, and she says, Sigrid has a letter to write. Mm-hmm. He's finally ready to write the letter to Tristan. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I think it was a pretty good, pr- good premiere. Uh, I, like I said, I thought the punch in the face was a little over the top, but uh, but I would probably give this one like an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I, yeah I'll go well, 8.5. I really like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, very good. Let us know what you think of the premiere. Are you so excited and happy to have all Creatures Great and Small back? We want to hear your thoughts in the comments section or on Twitter. And uh, check out all our reviews of every single episode. Uh, we'd love to have your thoughts on those. And uh, if and Michelle, where can people find you? Um, on Twitter, I'm Michelle R. Benton. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also make sure that you're following the podcast, Hallmarkies Pod, Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That helps us so much. And if you're watching YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store. So take a look at that. We even have all Cruise Green Small merch, inspired merch in the merch store. So check that out. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.